Welcome to the first video in Health Services Advisory Group's Quality Improvement Series for nursing homes. We have a problem. Our top referring hospital informed our nursing home by letter that we are not meeting their criteria to be considered for the preferred provider network. Our hospital readmission rates are significantly higher than other SNFs. What should we do? Where should we start? Let's start with a roadmap to quality. It starts with an assessment, followed by root cause analysis, strategy identification and prioritization, smart goal development, and the strategy tree to drive actions. These steps can be applied to any issue, not just readmissions. That said, taking the first step is often the most daunting part. Assessments are a great way to quickly act and get your improvement work up and running. HSAG has created several assessments, including opioid stewardship, antibiotic stewardship, adverse drug events, and quality assurance and performance improvement. So for our readmissions problem, let's use the Care Transitions Assessment tool. HSAG's assessments include evidence-based questions and are built on a change theory framework. So as questions are explored, there won't be just yes or no responses, but a range of answers to choose from based on the level of implementation. As a team responds to the level of implementation for each question, the tool identifies gaps, where to start first, as well as what areas of care may need more exploration. Getting back to our readmissions dilemma, let's work through a following assessment question as an example. Your facility has a process in place to validate staff proficiency using evidence-based education methodology, for example, TeachBack, during discharge instruction. Now let's say our SNF uses TeachBack for discharge education, but we suspect staff validation of their proficiency just isn't in place. So not implemented or no plan is selected. Every assessment question is supported by evidence found in the literature. Rationales and references for strategies and tactics are linked at the very end of each of the assessments. So with our example, how did the team determine resident TeachBack education was not present? Let's say as the team completed the assessment and reviewed the rationales and references, they realized that there are opportunities to improve the process of discharge education. This could be a glaring gap where the team could begin probing with some questions. For example, does the organization perform observations in real time to ensure teachback is being used in actual practice during discharge education? Do they have a coaching mechanism for our feedback and instruction when ineffective education techniques are observed? Team discussion confirms suspicions that TeachBack really isn't in place and it is not being utilized for discharge education in practice. But why is TeachBack not properly used? This is where your root cause analysis or RCA comes into play. Weeds are a great analogy for RCAs. We know for a weed not to come back, we must pull the entire root, which is a system, a network of multiple parts. But too often we go for that most visible problem to pluck off. And the most obvious or visible reason for a problem is often not the real reason for the problem, but just a symptom. When we only look at a singular cause, there tends to be a focus on the individual and finding blame. The RCA process promotes teamwork and leads to digging deeper and deeper, looking for the reasons behind the reasons. There's an entire system underneath as we probe. There's not one singular root cause. There are a number of RCA approaches. The five whys and fishbone diagrams are two examples. The RCA process takes practice, but it can be a valuable tool for performance improvement. Back to our example. From our assessment, we know that our SNF does not have a process in place to validate staff proficiency using TeachBack during discharge instruction. The team can use this finding to focus on one area for improvement and take the next step in the RCA. For this example, we are using HSAG's Gap Root Cause Analysis Worksheet. This breaks an RCA into four components to analyze. Data, observations, interviews, and finances. It recommends using the five whys, audit tools, and data reports to explore each area. Let's take a look at how a Gap RCA can help us in our path to quality. First, our team did a week-long observational audit of TeachBack use at discharge. We found that 70% of residents did not receive TeachBack. We then asked staff why. They said they were trained to use TeachBack, but there was no follow-up after training. This communicated a lack of importance to staff who often forgot to use this approach. Therefore, one major root cause to our issue is that leadership did not implement a staff validation process 
to ensure that TeachBack is proficiently being used at discharge. Now that we know what is causing our high readmissions, what do we do next? Especially as we're busy and short-staffed, how can we find the time to fix these problems? This is where Myomarker 3 on our quality journey comes into play. In our next video, we will focus on how you can identify interventions to use these root causes and prioritize which ones to work on first. So let's summarize the first two steps in our quality journey. One, the assessment, and two, the root cause analysis. Assessments give you the starting point to identify improvement opportunities. The root cause analysis identifies the specific factors that are leading to problem areas. Thank you for joining us on this journey. Our next step is to prioritize our strategies. We look forward to seeing you there.